so at this stage, Karen, things were, were, were going pretty well, it seemed, and, and, uh, and swimmingly in your life. And at 29, tragedy actually struck your life. Um, and it would change uh, forever when uh, Richard, your husband, who you had been in love with, uh, was, was murdered. Yeah. In an instant, everything changed. In an instant. So sad. Like, what actually happened? So we were, um, we were living in Orlando, and I was working as a recruiter. And the day that this happened, I had, um, an, I had interviews that I needed to do from home, which I normally didn't do. I was very good as, as far as like leaving work at work, um, specifically because Richard had just opened up a CrossFit gym. And so we were about six months into business. And so once I left work, I was, you know, coming to the next phase of life, which was picking up the kids and um, helping him with the gym. And just so, so it was very unusual for me to have to do um, any interviews after hours, but I was interviewing um, some VPs. And so that was their availability. So that morning, I remember texting him and just saying, hey, you know, my schedule is now going, rolling over to the evening. I have some interviews to do. Do you want me to pick up the kids or do you want me to just go home and you can bring them home later? And so he said, no, you know, they've missed you. So uh, why don't you come pick them up? And so I said, okay. And um, so I went, I picked up the kids and I got a phone call from someone while I was on my way to get them. And so he just piled them into the car. I gave him a wave and, and left. Um, so when I got home, I, my son was two at the time and we had my stepdaughter with me, which is why I say kids. Um, but she, uh, I dropped her off at her mom's house before I, I went home. And so my son was sitting in front of the TV. I just got him situated and I was on my first call on the first interview. I had three of them scheduled. So I was on the interview and I was using the house phone, but my cell phone was vibrating. And so I noticed it had been vibrating for a while, but because it was face down, I wasn't really thinking about it. It was a call, probably was thinking it was an alarm or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I finally turned it over and I saw that it was a missed call from one of the women who was a member at our gym. And so I thought to myself, hmm, that's interesting. Well, maybe Richard hurt himself. So I don't know if either of you CrossFit, have you all been a CrossFit no. box? Yeah, we know, yeah, yeah. No, of the CrossFit right. boxes. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So, you know, we have those big rigs, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. in my mind, I'm thinking he fell off the rig. Maybe yeah. he broke his arm. Maybe he hit his head, which is why she's calling me. So finally, the candidate um, was answering a question and I put him on mute to answer her phone call just to say, hey, is everything all right? What's up? You know, yeah. I'm doing an interview. And all I heard was screaming. No and worries. I couldn't make out um, like what she was saying. I honestly don't even remember if I was hearing people in the back as well, but it just sounded like complete pandemonium. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the only word I could make out was shot. And it was like, it was instant. As soon as I heard that word, my body just started trembling. It's like it was going into convulsions. And so I had to gather myself because remember I had the candidate on the phone. So I got off the phone with her. I hit unmute with him and tried to, with a steady voice, say, thank you so much for your time. We'll be in touch with next steps in the next week or so and just hurry up and get off the phone. And so I picked up my son and um, I remember bouncing him because my first thought was, I don't want him to feel what's happening to my body. And then, you know, for that to trigger something sure. in. Him. And so I took him to the neighbor's house and I just said, if you can watch him, you know, I'll, I don't know what happened at the gym, but something happened. She said, sure. I go a hundred and something down the highway. And it wasn't until, um, until the light right before the gym that I, I remember thinking to myself, why am I not on my way to the hospital? Because if this woman had called me several times and I didn't answer for a few minutes, and if it took me at least 10 minutes to get here, after all this mm. time, if he was shot, we should be headed to the hospital. And so I pull up and it's just, there's first responders everywhere. There's news reporters there. There's news trucks out there. There's people from the community. There's people from church. I mean, it was just, um, it was chaos. And, um, 
and I don't remember who told me or when they told me uh, that he died and, and died instantly. Um, but that, that was the night that my, that my life changed. Wow. It's so sad. Like, I can't believe like, like so, so just someone came and just shot, shot him. Like, do they, do they know who the person is? What, what actually happened? No. So six years later, they still don't um, have the shooter identified or um, he, so the story, I didn't ask a lot of questions. Uh, the people who were in there, Richard was teaching a class when this happened and the person walked in and he was standing by the chalkboard, I think writing people's times or something. And it was a guy. So this guy must've said something and he turned around and the guy shot him and he, um, and he died instantly because this, this man shot him in the head. Mm. And he, um, there was a getaway driver. And so he got in the car. Um, mm. We were in an industrial park area. So somebody, one of the other tenants, I think, tried to follow them for a little bit. Um, but no, to this day, we still don't have, they did, you know, they said, well, clearly this was a hit, but we can't find the motive. Wow. No, no one could like ID him or anything that saw it. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Oh, they were working out. Oh wow, it's so oh. sad. And um, and, yeah, sorry, go go. No, no, go for it. Go no, I'm done. Um, so I mean, I mean, it's really impossible, really, for us to kind of fathom how how you must take news like that. Like, so much go must go through your mind. Like, what now? And what about our son? And like, where do you, where do you begin? Hmm. So the first night, um, I, re I remember being at the crime scene and sitting behind a bush, just rocking back and forth, just saying, this isn't real. This isn't real. This isn't real. Cause that's, that's just all I, I couldn't even think. Um, at some point you are thinking now what? That's exactly what you're thinking because you just, you don't even know what direction to go. Um, when we were there at the crime scene, at one point, a police officer came up to me and said, Mrs. Millsap, you're going to have to call someone to clean up in there. Mm. And so when he said this, I remember thinking, first I was thinking, what the hell? Like, I'm, I mean, you know, I, I say... I, I say it lightly now, but I, it was very, it was with a lot of anger when I was in my head, like, just, I can't even believe that this person has said this to me. And so I got out. I said, well, what do you mean? Like, who do I call? I, no, actually I said, isn't that something you all do? And he said, no. And I said, well, who do I call? And he said, crime scene cleanup. And I said, oh, well, really? how do I even find them? Oh. And his response was, you can look in the yellow pages. No ways. No, hmm. like, sympathy nothing what's that's it? unbelievable mm -hmm. and this is and like so, a day this is like a day or two later the crime scene. no this is at the crime scene that night wow oh my god while we're Jeez. standing in the parking lot oh, and tragic. so as i was standing there um thankfully uh my pastor was there and he came right over to me and he said um karen don't worry about it we'll take care of it and I, I, I remember even before he came up to me in that space, I remember thinking to myself, this is my first responsibility as a widow. And then I was thinking, wait, wow. I'm a widow. Like I, I just couldn't. And so, you know, Craig, to your point, it was like, now what, like, what is, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. But when you, when you go through something and I can't speak for everybody's experience, but in this kind of traumatic experience, you literally can't think about what to do next. Yet the only thing that was given to me was an insensitive remark of, Hey, now you got to go clean up in there. Like it, so I couldn't even try to think about what to do next because you know, this was just dumped on me. <sighs> I'm so Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air, stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick. So 